Amy Khan here for seconds out with the gentleman looking to be the champion this weekend, Chris Billingsmith. Chris, sir, uh, good to see you. How are you doing? Yeah, very well. Thanks, mate. Yourself? Yeah, not too bad. All the better for speaking to you, too. Uh, interesting fight week this week. Obviously, of course, it uh, comes with a world title shot that you've been leaning for, but also comes against a former stablemate, former gym mate. Um, for someone who's always come across as calm, cool and collected in interviews, I just wonder uh, behind that, is there a little bit of tinge of sadness in terms of being fighting a former, well, a friend, I guess, um, this weekend for that world title shot? Um, no, not, not no sadness, you know, it's a world title shot. Um, and to be honest, I've wanted to fight Lawrence since the amateurs. He was number one in the country. I was out injured and he got onto GB and he was number one and was going for the Olympics. And I thought I was going to have to fight him in 2016 because um, I was going in the ABAs and he was in, but then he qualified for the Olympics, so missed that chance. Then when we turned pro, he was uh, obviously soon became number one in the country. So I'm a fighter, I'm a winner, and I want to be number one. So, uh, you know, that was always the aim. And then next thing I know, he's joined the gym. And then, uh, yeah, and then we uh, obviously had uh, had years in the gym together. I never thought this fight would happen. So for me, uh, having wanted to fight him before, um, years ago, um, it makes sense now. It makes the story even better for it to be at the very top of the world, you know, um, the very last last stage winning winning a world title. Apparently, part of the story, there's a mole in the camp. Is there, Chris? Um, I don't know. If there is a mole, they're either lying to him and he's happy or um, or they're telling the truth and he's scared because uh, it's, been a, it's been a fantastic camp. Yeah, I imagine if there was a mole in the camp regardless, it wouldn't be, make much difference considering that you two know each other so well. Uh, do you feel that you two knowing each other so well and Shane being in your corner, that kind of gives the edge into your favour over the two fighters uh, coming into Saturday night? Yeah, for sure, definitely. Um, because Shane knows him mentally, you know, in the corner when things are getting tough and, and what he's like as well. So um, that's a huge part of the sport and um, two brains are better than one. When you've had those opportunities to be with Lawrence up close and personal, what do you feel were the places where you got the edges, the, where you've got that advantage over him that will play out on Saturday? Um, I think now knowing how to get past the awkwardness and, and, um, and land, land shots, you know, you can't... You can't just stand off with Lawrence and, and sit there and let him be a sitting duck because that's when he lets his right hand go. Um, and he's obviously got a huge power in that. So, yeah, um, I think the advantage for me, like like we said, is just that experience. Most people go in the ring with him and they haven't got the experience. So it's all overwhelming and it's way too much to think about and overcome in 12 rounds at the top level. So the fact I've got all that banked already um, and I know what it's like and how if it does happen in the fight, the awkwardness, then I know how to not let it happen again, where a lot of people don't um, don't know how to get around that. Lawrence has made the move to Sugar Hill, as we're aware of. Did you see any improvements or change in his game from the first outing that he had against David Light? Yeah, I thought he uh, you know, seems a bit more up on his toes, um, sort of bouncing in and out a little bit. But other than that, no, you know, it's, it's Lawrence who like to set everything up off the jab and, and let the right hand go. And in terms of like the Bournemouth crowd as well, you've got your opportunity, which you've always wanted uh, in Bournemouth as well too, at the stadium as well too. Uh, look, there's always pressure in fights, but this must ramp it up as well in terms of the pressure, the media commitments as well. Um, do, do, you, do you feel that sense of you taking it all on board? Yeah, I mean, there's no more pressure. In the rest of my career, there'll be no more pressure in this fight week. Um, it's, it's the first world title fight ever to happen in Bournemouth. There's a first boxing match at the stadium. There's so much pressure on it. But as I always say, is the Billie Jean King quote of pressure's a privilege. And I'm in a very privileged position. I've got the whole town behind me. Um, and I get to create uh, an unbelievable end into this story. There's a feeling that the winner will be taken on Richard Rackpole. Richard Rackpole in your sights. Look, of course, Lawrence O'Coley is firmly in your sights first, but that's a fight you're welcome should you get the victory. Yeah, I mean, Lawrence has got a rematch clause. Um, so his team has got a rematch clause. Um, so we'll see if he wants that after. Um, and then, yeah, um, if I don't, I'm not sure what's going on with Richard, if he's going to get a world title shot. But, you know, if we can get two, like I've always said with me and Richard, if we can both get world titles and, and, and fight each other, have the rematch um, for, for Unify would be unbelievable. Expecting a rematch clause or surprised that there was a rematch clause in this fight with Lawrence? 
Um, I was and I wasn't. Um, yeah, I was in, in a sense of Lawrence, but maybe it didn't come from him. Maybe it's his team. It's a voluntary, um, although I don't think he had many other places to go in terms of his last performance, tickets, etc. not being exciting. But um, it's, a, it's an opportunity for him as much as it is for me to get straight out for him. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I, I, you know, Lawrence is, Lawrence is a confident lad, but um, he got a, he got a safety net. Just away from this, I wonder. Uh, we did an interview with uh, Shane last week, and he kind of mentioned look, uh, he hopes that Tommy Fury would knock out all the social media influencers. And Mams Taylor kind of came back and said, "Look, why are people leaving your gym?" I wonder if you saw that remark and had a response to that at all. No, no, um, no, I didn't, didn't, didn't see any of that. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, is that about what? What's that about? No, it was just, I guess Mams just took umbrage to him wishing that Tommy Fury would. Uh, knock out the rest of the social media influence a lot. All right. Uh, yeah, no. Um, yeah, no, no, I have no, no comment on that, to be honest. I haven't seen any of it. Fair enough. I suppose you're uh, fully uh, locked into this fight this weekend. Tell me then, the final word with you, how does this fight end on Saturday night? Uh, I'll stop Lawrence, whether that's the ref, his corner, or he's, or he's out cold. But um, that's what's happening Saturday night. Chris, a real pleasure to speak to you. Thank you for speaking to Seconds Out. All the best for this weekend. Thank you.